Hello. I'd like to introduce you to the men and women of the Gray Beret, the smallest elite paratroop unit in today's Air Force. During World War II, whether parachutists assigned to the 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions jumped into combat in France and Holland. Special operations weather support also began in World War II, when OSS weathermen jumped behind enemy lines to perform special reconnaissance missions. The critical weather intelligence data these teams gathered remarkably improved Allied resupply and bombing efforts. In the early 1960s, the Air Commando Special Warfare Weather Team established an indigenous weather net in Southeast Asia. The weather intelligence data they gathered contributed substantially to the effectiveness of special air warfare activities during the Vietnam War. Today's weather team parachutists are assigned to U.S. Army Airborne and Special Operations Units, helping them to anticipate and exploit the weather. Beginning in 1990, women were allowed to serve, making them the only operational female parachutists in the U.S. Air Force. They continue to serve today with the 82nd Airborne Division and 18th Airborne Corps. Today's Special Operations Weathermen are an integral part of the Air Force Special Operations Command's Special Tactics Forces, the ground combat forces of the U.S. Air Force. One of the distinctions uh, with being with the Special Operations Weather is, uh, of course, you get the jump wings on your chest, and not a lot of folks in the Air Force have those. And then you get the distinctive gray beret, which stands out wherever you're at. Not to mention, uh, you have the uh, Army Special Forces patch on your shoulder. You get asked questions about that. A lot of people say, oh, that's very interesting that you're a weather forecaster. You're attached to the Army, and you jump out of planes with them. Jumping out of C-1, C-130, or C-141, we show the experience of risking our lives, more or less, to get to the spot where we got to get to. And I feel, I feel um, I'm honored to actually be here and uh, be able to do something like this accomplish something that, as great as this. There are several training opportunities out there, uh, the initial being basic airborne uh, school. And if you continue to want to challenge yourself, there's a uh, jump master school and several schools located throughout the U.S., Pathfinder School, uh, Military Free Fall School, as well as the uh, Combat Divers uh, Qualification Course uh, in Key West. Weather parachutists participated in Operation Just Cause. Operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Operation Provide Comfort. Peacekeeping Operations in Somalia. And in Bosnia. The restoration of the democratic government in Haiti. Special Operations Weather Personnel continue to support NATO operations in Bosnia today. Weather parachutists are required to remain technically, tactically, and physically fit. They provide Special Operations Forces with detailed observations and accurate mission-tailored forecasts. As in World War II and the Vietnam War, Selected members are trained to perform special reconnaissance missions to gather meteorological intelligence data from behind enemy lines. The mission of the 10th Combat Weather Squadron is to organize, train, and equip forces to work with the Green Berets, the Rangers, and the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment. We train to go into the combat zone and to provide weather in and for the Special Operations Theater of Conflict. I'm currently assigned to the 75th Ranger Regiment. The 75th Ranger Regiment's mission is worldwide. The 75th Ranger Regiment's mission is aggressive. And the 75th Ranger Regiment's mission is, is the very essence uh, of, of soft weather support. We do it all here. The challenge here is finding enough time during a duty day, whether in garrison or deployed, to meet all the commitments that we have. It can be said without question that junior NCOs in the Special Operations Weather Community handle more responsibility and have a more direct impact in the mission um, than practically any other place in the Air Force. My time in Special Operations 
gave me the opportunity to push myself and to see just how far I was able to go. Uh, it takes a great deal of self-discipline to get through the training. You have to push yourself on a regular basis and find out uh, just how far you can go. And the advantage to being on a special ops weather team is that you get to fulfill your potential. You have to use your initiative. You have to uh, uh, set new standards. If you want to be an integral part of a, a very close, tight-knit team, then uh, special ops weather is where you want to go. Every individual is critical to the success of the team. Um, everybody needs to be able to work together towards a common goal, and that's to give the best weather support you can to your to your uh, customers. You can't give 90%. You know, you can't you can't just say today I'm just not feeling up to it. You have to feel up to it every day. And uh, so if if you can't do that, we don't want you. And I'm not talking about earning extra money. I'm not talking about getting any extra pay, but just sheer satisfaction of having personal integrity to stand up to an idea or a goal, service before self, and then excellence in everything you do, from push-ups in the morning to the forecast you put out, it doesn't matter. This is what it's all about. This is not nine to five. It's not mundane. It's not routine. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to be the same thing day in and day out. It's going to be flexible, and you have to be flexible to support it. You gotta be motivated. You gotta be dedicated.